First tournament of this new format and first tournament on the Switch as well. Moving over from the 3DS, going to miss the 3DS very much, but yes. we're on to the Switch now with these new games. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a lot of memories for a lot of players on the uh, Nintendo DS. We've been playing on it since what 2010 maybe 2009 even so it's been a long time coming coming to a new console a new game a new setup it's just going to be phenomenal to see how that works and as well what people are bringing uh, to this new tournament new games new pokemon allowed and some pokemon that aren't allowed anymore uh, but before we go into that we want to start with talking about vgc and what it is because there's a lot of players with the release of the Nintendo Switch and Pokemon Sword and Shield that are getting into this game for the first time. So we wanted to spend a little bit of time just talking about what VGC is and how do you get involved and what levels of competition are involved in playing in these tournaments. Yeah, so the first level of tournaments that you would have, com commonly referred to as locals by a lot of players, um, would be your Premier Challenges mm -hmm. and your Mid-Season Showdowns. These would be the tournaments that would be run by the tournament organisers maybe a few times a month in different places around your countries. Um, and they, they give the smallest amount of championship points, the championship points mm. being what you need to earn to qualify for the World Championships in August. Um, so the Premier Challenges will be worth 30 championship points yes. if you manage to win one. A mid-season showdown will be worth 50. And yeah, they're, they're, they're scattered around your country. You'll be able to ha have a look on the Pokemon website and mm -hmm. be able to find tournaments that are, are located near you. And they should, should be fairly fairly uh, consistent fairly regular and they're, yeah. they're always organized by the local players in the community so people that are going above and beyond to uh, make sure that everybody's got an opportunity to play vgc uh, to earn those all important championship points to earn an invite to the world championships invite only tournaments so only a select few are able to make it to the top uh, and then of course once you're through to through from local tournaments you have the uh, larger tournaments, you have the regional level tournaments, which is exactly what we're here to be uh, presiding over today, and we're going to see some great matches. These are bigger tournaments, sometimes organized by the Pokemon company themselves, sometimes organized by some local players. Uh, we are here and hosted by Yokmok today, um, who have organized this amazing tournament. We've got so many players, it's going to be one of the biggest ever, so really exciting. But um, at these tournaments, you have much more opportunities to earn a lot more points. So, Jamie, you said 30 and 50 for the local level tournaments. Once you get up to the regional level, there's 200 points up, to gra up for grabs here for the winner. So a really big step up. And the points go a lot further down because you've got a lot more uh, tournaments. Now, of course, Jamie and I are no strangers to the top level of competition and actually we're joined today by a three-time regional champion. So Jamie's won many a tournament across the years, starting in 2015 was your first regional win, wasn't it, Jamie? Uh, 2015 was my first uh, season competing. I managed to win my first tournament in 2016. Ah, 2016, yes, yes, yes. that's it. Um, yes, we were talking before the uh, tournament about it was your first finals here in Bochum, wasn't it, in 2015 Yes, back in 2015, season. yeah. Back in, I think, June of 2015. Uh, my second ever regional championship, and I managed to come uh, all the way in, into the final. Uh, like, from starting off just an unknown, unknown player. Mm. It, it, you don't have to be these well-known players to do well at these tournaments. You can come along and you can make a splash in the scene. Yep. Just at your first tournament, so, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So... Uh, lots of um, lots of good stuff that we're going to see here. We're going to be running at uh, this tournament, likely going to be nine rounds of Swiss today, uh, followed by a top 16 cut tomorrow. So there's going to be a lot of games to see. And this is what happens when you go to the next level, to the regional level. Uh, but above that, of course, there's another level, and that's the internationals. Yes, the internationals. We've got one international per per zone in in the world we've got well, we've already had our latin american international that was won mm -hmm. by james beck back on the 3ds in the ultra series yes we're going to be having the oceania international championships in february down in melbourne in australia and yep. in april we'll be having our own european international in berlin in april yep. that'll be great and then finally the north american international championship will be held in june and it's currently unannounced where it will be in America, but uh, we'll have to stay tuned to find out where that is. And yeah, and just like 
a great introduction for me with my, my three regionals. We're no, it's no stranger to the international stage as well no. with Ben here. Um, back when they were called nationals, um, before we had the <laughs> internationals, we have yeah. a two-time national champion here with Ben and, al and also uh, a few top cups going into those internationals as well. Yeah, and they're, they're so, so good to go to all of these tournaments. I mean, back in, back in the days when I started, back in 2012, 2013, we had uh, the national tournaments, exactly as you said, Jamie, but we, they were a little bit more local. They were ten tended to be confined to their region. So you had uh, European players going to the European uh, national championships. Uh, we had more than one a year, so you could go to a few and see what uh, see what happens. And the invite structure was a little bit different, but you know, ultimately they were quite big tournaments and quite a big deal uh, in the competitive scene. But nowadays we have those internationals, and going back to the points, those all important points and those all important uh, ways to get to the world championships. These are worth at maximum 500 points. So you can see the difference here. If you go to the, the small tournaments, you can keep going and keep going and get those points and the, the point really reward consistent play and consistent finishes between uh, the smaller tournaments. Then you go up to the regional level, you get a few more points, you get chances for a, a lot more uh, points further down the line. So maybe you don't have to break into the top cup. Maybe you could get a top 32 or something like that. Get quite a lot of points out of it. And then the internationals. Yes. That are worth so many points. Yeah, if you, if you win one of those internationals, just an automatic invite for you. Um, you need 300 championship points here in Europe to yep. qualify for the World Championships, and then 500 will be, will be more than enough. Even with um, the, uh, North America, you need 400 championship points, I believe. So a, a win there is still easily earning your, your World Championships invite. Yeah, and even, even something like a top four, which <laughs> obviously in a four, 500 person event is quite a big ask, but hey, you know, you can always do it. I remember my first year in 2012 when I started competing, I came second in that tournament and it was just completely on a whim. I was not really involved in the competitive circuit, but I managed to make it to the finals. So no different to you, Jamie, in your first year of competing at 2015 regionals uh, here in, here in Bochum. You can do it if you if you try, if you train, if you practice with your friends and come to these tournaments and really uh, put everything into it, do the best you can and see what happens. Yeah, and if you come along to these tournaments as well, the more players that we get, the more championship points there are to give out. So um, we, mm. if, if, we, if we hit certain kickers, then we get extra championship points going down levels, going from top 16s, ex expanding out into the top 32s. I believe that top 64 will get um, championship points here. I don't think we quite got to un top 128 for this tournament. Well, we'll have to see what the player total is. We'll be coming back to you on that uh, at the end of round one or when we come back in for round two. We'll have the final numbers of all of the players that have checked in, uh, played their first round so we know exactly how many uh, players there are, how many points are up to grab for grabs and also, of course, how far they go down, as you say, whether we get those top 64 points or top 128, it is possible if you get enough players here. So we'll have to come back to you on that once we know the final numbers. Yeah, so um, we're going to be having two players here now set up, ready to go. So we're going to be having uh, Hippolyte Bernard as our most re recent regional champion that we had uh, back in Cologne, back in the Ultra Series, yeah. uh, versus Felix Lutz. Felix Lutz, so yeah, so we've got a player that I was lucky enough to be able to stream his final game in Cologne uh, back in uh, back last year and it was a really insightful uh, game that we had an, an interview afterwards if you haven't seen it I suggest go back and, and have a look and uh, see what really goes into what uh, what a winning team is made up of and uh, the, the words that Hippolyte had afterwards were really uh, really good and really really gave us a great insight into how he was thinking about the game and how he approached his team building. Felix on the other hand I'm not sure we've seen him on stream before so we get his debut round one 2020 uh, on the new consoles on the new games so gonna be exciting to feature him uh, hopefully we'll have a fun game between the two of them and see some really good uh, team choices coming out and really good 
ways of approaching this early format. Yeah, because we saw Hippolyte um, approaching quite a standard approach with his uh, regional winning team back in the Ultra Series. He was sticking to that Xerneas Groudon core that was very well known um, with that cheeky Shedinja as well. <laughs> um, quite, like, very, very influential in the final game, in the final as well. Um, so maybe he's going to be sticking to what would be considered standard at the moment, what would be considered the, the strong Pokemon going into this new format, which we haven't, haven't established this, this meta yet. So mm. it's going to be completely fresh. We don't really know what's going to be coming out strong here. We've got some good ideas. We see, seem to have some Pokemon that are being used slightly more than other Pokemon at the moment, but because this is just a brand new tournament, we have no idea what's going to be used here. And, and maybe Felix, with um, uh, not being on stream before, he's been able to come up with something really cool that be, he's been able to hide um, going into this format. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, this is, this is always the opportunity for players to do something a bit different in a completely untested field. Right, so we've, we've had uh, a couple of little local tournaments already happen uh, this year. Uh, we've had some in the UK. Um, I know they've been happening all over Europe as well. So people have started playing the format, but people aren't comfortable yet. We haven't got, you know, that defined metagame. If you look at the end of uh, VGC 2019 in the Ultra Series, we really knew what to expect. You know, if you saw something like a Xerneas and Groudon combination, you kind of knew what it was going to be doing. That's not the case anymore. All of these players have complete creative license to do exactly what they want to do. And someone that's no stranger to being creative, Jamie, <laughs> is yourself. So yes. coming into a new format, how do you think you are best to approach the game? Well, you, you can go back to what is known to be good because we've got previous Pokemon such as um, the, some of the Pokemon that we're seeing here on Hippolyte's team got that Arcanine that's been so consistent throughout the format the Tyranitar as well has won a few world championships and has been very consistent in all the formats that it's been through and actually we're seeing none, no new Pokemon from this um, new generation coming out from Hippolyte he's going to be using all, all old Pokemon from the previous generations yeah and it's, it's interesting to see I mean the the very fact that we don't have access to all of the Pokemon that we used to have. I mean, there's, there's getting on to 800 uh, plus Pokemon now that I you think, have access I think, to. I think it's 890 Pokemon 890 we have now. Pokemon. Um, maybe not allowed those restricted legendaries anymore, but yeah. No, exactly. And, and now we've got 400 to play with uh, without the uh, legendaries and mythical Pokemon that aren't allowed in the VGC format. Uh, interesting to see that now that we've got uh, that restriction on Pokemon that are allowed, we see players uh, and Pokemon have new life breathed into them and they can be more competitively viable and more usable now because there's less things that are able to counter them. Yeah, and we also see some Pokemon that were maybe in the background for some formats previously and that have really come out into the limelight in this format, really because of that new mechanic that we have, that Dynamaxing. Yeah, exactly. And, and Dynamaxing is going to be so crucial for this tournament. It comes with a bunch of new mechanics that players have to be aware of. Uh, each of the moves changes in a similar way that Z moves used to change into different moves when they were used. We have exactly the same with Dynamax. So uh, players are going to have to account for that when they're uh, choosing their team when they're playing the game, because unlike Z-moves, where you had to have a Pokemon holding a Z-crystal, in this case, any Pokemon can Dynamax at any time. And yeah, that really gives flexibility to your team. Because you had to restrict yourself with those Z-crystals on your team, people would run maybe one or two Pokemon that were dedicated Z-move users. But yeah, having all six Pokemon available to Dynamax and all have access to these new, new different moves uh, is going to be really exciting going into this format. It is. So... Talking about Hippolyte Ballard, he's here on your screen. He's getting set up. Um, we've seen, you can see in front of you, he was the previous champion in the Cologne Regional Championships in VGC 2019, the Ultra Series. Uh, not many other performances before that. Someone that came a little bit out of the woodwork to uh, win the tournament. And I'm sure he had other local finishes and other tournaments that he did quite well in previously um, but here we see him coming back into the 2020 season and trying to I'm sure get another regional title for himself so I'm really excited to see what Hippolyte has brought to this game. 
Yeah, and uh, Felix is going to be his opponent here with a really cool team, and he's he's definitely going to be using some of those newer Pokemon with that Ndidi and the Dracovish there as well. So a really cool team coming out from Felix, and it, it, even though he hasn't been too known before going into this for, this um, this regional and coming onto the stream for the first time, yeah, he's he's going to be bringing a really cool team out here. Yeah, and th and you know this is what we were saying, Jamie. We've got the ability to use both all of those old Pokemon that uh, maybe hadn't been used for a while, as well as using those new Pokemon. And this is the tournament, this is the one where everybody gets that playing field to decide, you know what, I think this is really strong in this format. Nobody else has seen it before. Let's see how it goes. And I think that's exactly what Felix is trying to do here. Yeah, he's got some old favorites in that Snorlax that we saw be so dominant back in the 2017-2018 format and a little bit in the 2019 format in the World Championships. It popped up for, for a little bit. But yeah, uh, Snorlax having access to that Gigantamax form very recently, what like being able to make it even stronger with its own signature uh, Dynamax moves. Yeah, so Gigantamax is something slightly different to Dynamax. It gives specific Pokemon the ability to change into different forms. And as you said, Jamie, it gives them access to these different moves that only they're allowed to, to use in the VGC format. So uh, some Pokemon that aren't able to Dynamax, say like that Wash Form Rotom there, uh, it doesn't have a Gigantamax form, but can Dynamax and use all of the Dynamax moves. In a, in a similar way, Snorlax will likely see that be a Gigantamax form, um, but Snorlax is the only Pokemon that, on that team that gets a Gigantamax form. So, you know, maybe Felix is trying to take advantage of that. Yeah, and one of the nice things about having access to that Gigantamax form is you don't need to bring the Gigantamax form to the battle. You can just go for the regular Dynamax mm. with that Pokemon. And in this case, the Snorlax, it could just be Dynamaxing regularly and going for max strikes to reduce the speeds of the opposing Pokemon, or it could be going for the Gigantamax uh, form instead and going for the G-Max replenishes to recover its berries that it so likes to eat. Yeah, it does, it does. Um, we've seen that in previous formats. I mean, we go back to 2018, certainly 2017, you saw Snorlax all over the place. Uh, he was just tapping on his belly, uh, making sure his attack was going right up to the maximum stage and dishing out so much damage and so difficult to take a knockout on. Uh, so maybe we'll see a similar tactic here coming out from Felix. Uh, it remains to be seen. Again, new format, new rules, new Pokemon, and new ways of playing. Yeah, speaking of new Pokemon, that Dracovish has definitely been making <laughs> waves. With the access to that Ficious Rend, one of the strongest moves that we've seen in a long time. Mm. It e being even stronger than some of the previous Z moves that we've seen that have been yes. so strong. Stronger than some of these Dynamax moves that are coming out as well. It's, it being able, if, if it's able to move first, it will double the base power of the Ficious Rend and deal out some huge damage. Yeah, something that uh, Ippoli is going to have to be wary of. And, and, you know, equally with that Snorlax, we've seen... Um, Snorlax, as we said before, just doing so much damage if it's able to get something like a belly drum up, um, if Felix is going down that line. Going back to Gigantamax Pokemon though, we only have a certain number of Gigantamax Pokemon available at the moment. And I think there's about nine Dynamax Pokemon that are allowed in the VGC 2020 format. Um, and we're gonna be seeing more as the season goes on. So the Pokemon that we're seeing here are uh, Snorlax, we have um, other Pokemon that are um, possible to use uh, that we've seen, like Sandaconda we've seen, um, and various others. So it's going to be different going through to the later stages of the competition. Things aren't going to stay the same. We're going to get new Gigantamax Pokemon as the format goes on and be able to see how the format changes around that. Yeah, and as we saw from that Pokemon Direct very recently, um, we're going to have access very soon to uh, the Gigantamax Colossal, the Lapras, Flapple, and Appleton, yes. um, because they're going to be more frequent in the raid battles. And as the Pokemon become more frequent in those raid battles, they're going to be introduced into this VGC format. So it's quite nice that we get to um, expand on the format as we go through this season. Yeah, exactly. And these Gigantamax Pokemon are pretty rare. You know, you don't you don't just run into them in the wild naturally very often. So something that players have got to uh, spend a little bit of time making sure they're prepared for these tournaments. If they want to make use of those special G-Max moves, they have to, uh, to put a little time in, put a little preparation into 
getting ready for these tournaments and making sure that they have the right Pokemon for the job. Yeah, and I, I expect to see some Gigantamax forms going into the, this tournament. Uh, we've got the Snorlax on the stream. We'll have to see if that's going to be carrying the Gigantamax mm. form as well. Uh, we've got the, the Pikachu that is <laughs> also going, going to be quite, quite, it grows very back to its chubby form. <laughs> Missed the chubby form from its uh, old trading cards. Yes. Yeah. yeah, having a really, really um, strong, it's able to paralyze both Pokemon with its G-Max move. Yeah, and, and able to paralyze Pokemon like Excadrill, uh, we've seen quite a lot in the early part of this format and something I'm sure we'll see quite a bit of on stream today. Um, ground type Pokemon are usually immune to the par paralysis status effect. So having a Gigantamax move that's able to paralyze a ground type is really, really strong. Yeah, we've had moves such like such as Glare that are able to paralyze because mm. you usually you associate the paralysis with the electric moves and obviously they don't affect the ground type Pokemon. And then you have these strange interactions with some moves such as maybe Tri-Attack that could um, paralyze the ground types. We've also got that Befuddle coming out from <laughs> that potential Gigantamax Butterfree as well that could really be spreading some stasis around. Yeah, and, and the, the fun thing about Butterfree is that you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you used uh, G-Max Befuddle and uh, you either get Paralysis, Poison or Sleep uh, potential to come out on both of your opponent's Pokemon. But you don't know which one. Uh, we were watching a game the other day where one Pokemon fell asleep, one Pokemon got paralyzed and then got fully paralyzed uh, after that turn. So wasn't able to move. Uh, and so you can see really there the power of the move. Uh, using it first, then both Pokemon on your opposing side of the field not being able to move, not being able to do something, that's a wasted turn for your opponent. So something players are going to have to watch out for. Yeah, and you also have to be careful of the regular forms as well. They, these Pokemon don't need to go for the, their Dynamax or their Gigantamax forms to make an impact in the game, like with the Butterfree. It's one of the few mm. Pokemon that we, ha that we have in the format that has access to redirection with that Rage Powder. And also the Sleep Powders as well. It doesn't need to Gigantamax to be able to put things to sleep with the Sleep Powder. No, certainly not. And it has... Uh, some other things that are involved in ability that makes its moves a little bit more accurate. So uh, Sleep Powder, which we've known in the past, not the most reliable way of putting your opponents to sleep. Most players used to opt for something like Amoongus, which was very common yes. all the way back since 2011 when it was released, using uh, a move called Spore, which has a 100% chance um, of putting an opponent to sleep um, if there's no other effects on the field. So... Sleep Powder, not quite as reliable as Spore, and most players used to opt for that, but they don't opt for that anymore because there's not many Pokemon in the format that are actually allowed it now. So different methods are coming out of using those same tactics from old formats. Yeah, we're seeing act uh, a lot of players opt for Yawn uh, as their move, uh, a choice of move for putting mm. Pokemon to sleep. And we haven't really seen that too much in previous formats because it takes that extra turn to put the Pokemon to sleep. So they get to move twice potentially before they get put to sleep. But mm. because of the Dynamax forms being limited to one per match and to three turns, if you get the Yawn onto that Dynamax Pokemon, then you have to choose to sacrifice your Dynamax or have that Dynamax Pokemon be put to sleep. Yeah, exactly, and and uh, that's a really powerful tool to use in this format. Where you've got your Dynamax Pokemon, as you said, only one per game, only three turns that it can be on the field in its Dynamax form before it goes back into its normal form. So you've got this real situation where you choose to Dynamax, you have to make the most of it as a player. You have to make sure that you're using your, those Dynamax moves or those Gigantamax moves, those G-Max moves, as much and as effectively as possible to get the most benefit out of it before you go back to your normal form. And you've got to do that while your opponent may be Dynamaxing themselves or Gigantamaxing themselves and trying to make the most of their own. Yeah, choosing when in the battle to Dynamax is really crucial going into this format. You see a lot of people opt for strategies where you do want to Dynamax one of your Pokemon immediately and start dishing out those max moves. Mm. Or if you want to conserve your uh, Dynamax in the back, maybe for later in the game, after you've set up the ball position that you want for that Dynamax Pokemon. So choosing the correct time to Dynamax is really key for players going into this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And just looking over, it looks like these players are nearly set up. So hopefully we'll be going into team preview very soon, getting this tournament started. I'm excited to see what we're going to see. We've already had a glance of the teams. So this is going to be an exciting matchup. Uh, Jamie, what do you think that um, 
you'd like to see from this match between these two players? I think I would like to see the Ndidi and the Dracovish come out for Felix here because we've got the brand new Pokemon. I want to see these brand new Pokemon <laughs> on the stream with Hipp Hippolyte opting for so, so n none of these new Pokemon, but the tried and true Pokemon that we've seen be consistent throughout the previous VGC formats. Yeah, I, and I think that's the uh, that's going to be the the real key through this tournament is going to be how many players are really embracing these new Pokemon. We've got so many to choose from and so many different ways of training them as well. You know, you've got different um, moves that they can all learn. You've got different ways to train them. You have different abilities to choose from. You have different items to play in. I know that may sound daunting to players out here that aren't so experienced with VGC, um, but once you get into it, once you really know what's going on, it it really becomes clear quite quickly once you've once you've started playing the game. So hopefully these players, especially the more experienced ones, which we're more likely to be uh, showcasing on stage and giving us a really great show, uh, they're going to be hopefully embracing these new Pokemon and showing us exactly what they can do in this new format. Yeah, I really hope so. There's a lot of really cool new Pokemon that have come out uh, from this new, new, new generation of Pokemon here. And also some of the old generation Pokemon having access to new moves to um, mix up their move pool a little bit, giving them access to some new niches going into this format as well. Um, it's, it's going to be really exciting to see what comes out of this tournament. Yeah, it is. And as you can see, both players are sitting there ready to go. Uh, we can see that the battle is about to begin. Uh, hopefully we'll go into team preview very soon and we can give you the rundown of the teams again. Uh, looks like these players are just quite calm and content actually uh, sitting there waiting for the game Felix looks like he's been up there here a hundred times before and this is just another game to him yeah it looks quietly confident to me and Hippolyte of course no no stranger to the stream after um, winning that regional championship back in Cologne as well so um, also spotting a qu quite a unique hairstyle here as well <laughs> and yeah, yeah it's, 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 I'm really excited to jump into this game yeah I, I'm quite um, I'm quite looking forward to uh, seeing how these Dynamax turns interact and uh, seeing what these players do with them. And you see here, here's the handshake. We're going into team preview. Jamie, take it away. Yes, so we'll just run down the teams again. We've got Felix here running that Snorlax, Horlucha, the Wash Rotom, Duraludon, Indeedee of the female variety and the Rebombi. And for Hippolyte here, he's going to be running that Tyranitar, Togekiss, Arcanine, Gastrodon, Rotom, Cut, and Bronzong. Yeah, so you made note of the... Uh, gender of Indeedy and something that's really important for this format and how this matchup is going to go uh, in the male form of Indeedy and the female form of Indeedy do get slightly different moves which is the first time that that's really happened um, in Pokemon so Indeedy gets access to a move like Follow Me which is going to support that Snorlax potentially in its Gigantamax form and something Hippolyte's going to be have to be aware of uh, as it looks like um, Felix isn't looking to set up a trick room or reverse the speeds of his Pokemon. It looks like he may be using his Rebombi to increase the speed of his Snorlax uh, with a move called Speed Swap that swaps the speed stats of each Pokemon. So Snorlax alone for being very slow, in uh, Rebombi known for being really fast. So uh, that's going to be something that Hippolyte's going to have to watch out for. But Hippolyte is going to have a really solid team He's going to want to be maybe setting up Trick Room with that Bronzong, maybe just switching around, trying to make most use of Follow Me with something like Togekiss, and just keep out-damaging Felix and make sure he gets to the end of the game with uh, more damage on his side. Yeah, and of course, we did, did just see the true battles come out for this tournament. The trainer <laughs> cards are looking very nice for both players here, for Felix and Hippolyte. So we're going to be going into this turn one of this tournament, and we're going to have Felix sending out his Ndidi and his Snorlax versus Hippolyte's Tyranitar and Togekiss. And Ndidi's going to be setting up that Psychic Terrain. Yeah, Psychic Terrain, not going to be doing too much uh, in this particular environment. Uh, blocked uh, Pokemon that are grounded from being affected by uh, priority moves and nothing on the field looking like it's going to be uh, moving with priority here. Uh, looks like we're going to probably see Indeedee and Snorlax doing something that we know they like to do uh, using that follow me and belly drum. So next turn, Felix is going to be able to dish out potentially a lot of damage and Hippolyte is going to have to do as much as he can this turn to remove Indeedee from the field, make sure that he's able to target down that Snorlax 
in the next turn. Yeah, well, if you want to remove a Pokemon from the field, you want to activate your Dynamax factor. <laughs> and Hippolyte is going to be doing just that, Dynamaxing his Tyranitar here, having access now to a much stronger Dark Move in that Max Darkness. Going to be dealing out potentially a lot of damage to this Indeedy. As we're going to see the Follow Me come out for the Indeedy, as we expected. It's going to be redirecting all the moves into itself, away from that Snorlax to allow it to set up. And Tokis is going to be going for a yawn here into this Indeedy, so Indeedy's going to be getting very sleepy here and will be not uh, will fall asleep next turn as the Tyranitar is going for Max Knuckle into this Indeedy as well. Not doing too much damage, but importantly going to be increasing the attack of that Tyranitar as well. The Tokis as well, but known to be a special attacker. But the Tyranitar now is going to be doing a lot more damage with that Max Knuckle. But speaking of much more damage, <laughs> here comes the Snorlax with the Belly Drum, going to be cutting its HP in half and maximizing its attack as it's going to munch away on that berry. It's going to be that Figgy Berry restoring a third of its HP here. And we're going to get a little bit of Sandstorm Chip to end out the turn. Yeah, so uh, definitely lots of damage going to be coming out from this Snorlax now. Uh, interesting decision from Ippolite to go for the Yawn on that Indeedee uh, rather than trying to remove it from the field. So maybe uh, has a, some, uh, a little tactic in the back, maybe wants that Indeedee to take a nap, then start uh, really going into the Snorlax. We've seen that Max Knuckle come out. It's going to be really crucial for that Snorlax to be able to do super effective damage to, sorry, Tyranitar doing super effective damage to the Snorlax on uh, Felix's side of the field. So uh, maybe wanting to preserve his Pokemon here, uh, get through another turn once the Indeedee is asleep, or if Felix decides to switch it out to take away that sleep, uh, going to be able to come back in and start doing damage to Snorlax. Yeah, well, it's not going to be the Indeedee switching out here at the moment. It's going to be that Togekiss switching out to replace with the Arcanine going to intimidate both of Felix's Pokemon, going to be cutting that Snorlax's attack just a little bit with that Intimidate. And here we see a Dynamax or potentially that Gigantamax coming out from Felix here. We're going to have to see if he's opted for that Gigantamax form of his Snorlax. And yes, we see the tree <laughs> on top of the belly there. So that is indeed the Gigantamax form of the Snorlax. Now having access to that G-Max Replenish if it wants to uh, have a chance of recovering the berry that it has just eaten as well. And indeed he opting to stay in here. So it will fall asleep this turn if it stays on the field. Going for a Psychic into what was that Togekiss slot and doing a nice bit of damage to that Arcanine. And Tyranitar is going to be increasing its attack even more. Going for that Max Knuckle into the Snorlax here. There was no redirection this turn, so the Snorlax is going to be hit by that super effective Max Knuckle. And increasing the attack of that Tyranitar as well. And the Arcanine as well, which is known to be a physical attacker, so that card could come into play as well. As the Snorlax does go for that G-Max Replenish into the Tyranitar, doing a nice bit of damage, but no recovery of that berry. Yeah, nice there from Hippolyte, bringing in his Arcanine, getting that Intimidate on the field and trying to negate some of that boost that came out from the Belly Drum. Felix deciding not to switch out his Indeedy, not to use Follow Me. So that Snorlax did take a hit that maybe it didn't want to do. We saw G-Max Replenish come out, but no berries coming back onto the field. So Snorlax is under threat here and Felix is going to have to do something about that if he wants to keep it on the field with that Tyranitar raising it both its attack and Arcanine's attack from that Max Knuckle coming out. So while it looked like from an early game, Felix was on the front foot, able to dish out so much damage. Unfortunately, normal types are resisted by rock types, so wasn't able to get the damage that he wanted off on Tyranitar. Um, and Hippolyte was able to reduce the damage of Snorlax as well as create more threats on the field with that Max Knuckles. So something Felix is going to have to look out for. Yeah, so Arcanine content here to just switch in, intimidate that Snorlax and switch straight back out into that Togekiss that we saw. The NDD has to stay asleep this turn. It's not going to be able to redirect anything on, away from the Snorlax. So this Max Darkness is going to be going into the Snorlax. Mm. And thanks for those plus two increased stages of attack from the Tyranitar, that Max Darkness is enough to knock out this Snorlax. So the, the Gigantamax form used up on Felix's side and now the Snorlax is going to be returned to Felix's Pokeball here and not having access to that redirection from the Indeedee as it was asleep has, has made him lose his Gigantamax really early here. Yeah, and that's something that you don't want to see as a player. You want to be able to use your Dynamax and your Gigantamax Pokemon as effectively as you can and that's exactly what we're seeing Ippolite do here. He's making sure that he's got those two Max Knuckles, he's got that Max Darkness off. Now where Tyranitar's going back to its normal form as you see it shrinking back down there, it's still going to be a really big threat for Felix and something that Felix is going to have to really be careful of how he brings himself back onto the front foot. But it is going to be difficult. 
Togekiss has come back onto the field. We know that Togekiss, both in previous formats and in this format, uses that follow me to redirect attacks away from uh, his Pokemon, and that's exactly what we see here. Well, it's going to be keeping that Tyranitar safe from those potential bug and fairy moves coming out from that Rabombi, as it's going to be going for that Moonblast into the Togekiss. And going to be doing a nice bit of damage here. You're going to have to see if the Indeedee is going to be staying asleep. And note, it's going to wake up and go for that Psychic into the Togekiss. And thanks to that Psychic Terrain boost, it's also going to do a nice bit of damage. But Togekiss <laughs> hanging on really easily here as a big rock slide comes out wow. onto Hit Felix's Pokemon, knocking out that Indeedee and revealing the Focus Ash on that Rabombi. But thanks to that Sandstream that the Tyranitar also set for itself, is going to be doing that last little bit of chip damage to knock out this robot again. Yeah, so absolutely huge turn there for Ippolite. He's managed to redirect attacks away from um, away from that Tyranitar that's got its boosts up using Rock Slide, which is a move that, uh, if you're not familiar with VGC, has been used every year that it's been allowed and to really good effect. Uh, some people describe it as the best move in VGC, and there's a reason for that. It hits both Pokemon, there's a chance of flinching as well if you're going first. And as you can see there, he's, Ippolite's used it to absolutely great effect. So Felix bringing that Holucha onto the field may be able to uh, do a little bit of damage to that Togekiss, may be able to remove it, but it's going to have a hard time coming back against Hippolyte's four Pokemon left. Yeah, of course, activating that Psychic Siege that we saw, thanks to the Psychic Terrain, being able to increase the special defense of the Horlucha here, but he is facing down the physical attacker in the Tyranitar, so the Psychic Seed won't be helping out this Horlucha, and it's going to be going for that Acrobatic, so thanks to the Psychic Seed being used, that Acrobatics is going to be doubling in power, and it's easily enough to knock out this Togekiss. Critical hit on top, maybe not so necessary, but this Tyranitar <laughs> is going to be going for that Rock Slide again. It does connect onto this Horlucha. It's also single target now, and is easily going to be knocking out this Horlucha, and taking the first game for Hepolite. Yeah, that single target Rock Slide uh, moves that hit multiple Pokemon. When they only hit one Pokemon, they're at their normal power. When they hit both Pokemon, they're slightly reduced in damage. So we can see the effect there of a single target Rock Slide. Boosted twice by those Max Knuckles is enough to pick up the KO. And the first game goes to Hippolyte. Yeah, very exciting first game. We've already seen one of those Gigantamax forms coming out in that Snorlax. But it, it, with the Indeedee going to sleep so early, not being able to redirect away to allow that Snorlax to use the maximized attack that it got from the Belly Drum as effectively as it could because the Tranitor was able to move first and do so much damage to that Snorlax. And we did see that the Rabombi was in the back with that potential speed swap onto the Snorlax. Mm. And if the Snorlax would have been set up and then got speed swapped onto it, it would have been able to move first and start dealing out a huge amount of damage. And also the Holucha in the back with that Psychic Seed, a nice fast mode for um, Felix coming out here with that Unburdened potential on the Holucha. Mm. Yep. When the Psychic yep. Seed is used, when the Holucha uses one of its items, it's gonna be doubling that speed and putting it faster than pretty much anything in the format. It is, and, and speed is so important in VGC. You want to be going first if you can, and there's so many different ways that you can do that. You can either set up a Tailwind and double the speed for both Pokemon on your side of the field. You can boost your speed with different moves, something like Dragon Dance, boost speed. You can do things like Trick Room and say, hey, I'm gonna reverse the order of the turn and say my slow Pokemon now go first. So. Something that we see quite commonly in VGC uh, players use, but speed swap, as you say, it's a slightly less common approach to changing the speeds of Pokemon, but no less impactful um, to the game where you get something like that Gigantamax Snorlax. When it gets its uh, speed and its belly drum up, there's no stopping it. Yeah, and unfortunately for Felix, he's opted for this female in DD that does have access to the follow me, but the male in DD would have access to that trick room. So mm. opting for the redirection instead of the speed reversals for the Snorlax instead. So gonna be jumping into this game too. We'll give a quick rundown of the teams again with Felix running that Snorlax, Horlucha, Wash Rotom, Duraludon, female in DD, Rabombi, with Hippolytes, Tyranitar, Togekiss, Arcanine, Gastrodon, Cut Rotom, and Bronzong. Yeah, so this game, I think we're gonna probably mix things up uh, we may see the same leads, but maybe Felix wants to approach the game from a different perspective. So, Jamie, what do you think is the best thing for Felix to do, given what we've seen already? I think I might want to see that Horlucha come out immediately with that Indeedee, as you've still got redirection to set up potentially a Swords Dance on your mm -hmm. Horlucha as well. You'll have access to that Unburden with the Psychic Seed that will increase its speed as well. So that could be a, a, an alternative potential setup option for Felix here. As 
The Snorlax was a bit too slow. We didn't see any kind of trick rooms available, so it's always going to be moving last with such a low base speed. And we were yeah. just able to see, thanks to the Indeedy being put to sleep, it wasn't able to redirect those moves again. So seeing the trainer cards again, please put in the chat who you think won the trainer card <laughs> battle here. So yeah, how, how, who, who do you, how do you think they're going to adjust here? Well, I, I really hope we're going to be seeing a little bit more redirection coming out from Felix. Uh, looks like uh, Ippolite's decided to completely switch it up, though. Yeah, Hippolyte's going to be the one changing the Pokemon he's sending out first here, even though he was the one who won the game in the first first game. And Tokis Bronzong is going to be the lead of choice for Hippolyte here. And Felix is just going to be sticking with that Indeedee and Snorlax. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, conversation about if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, Hippolyte's deciding it ain't broke, but I'm fixing it anyway, coming out with a completely different lead. And it looks like he, he wants to opt for maybe a more Trick Room uh, oriented strategy here a bronzong very well known for being able to reverse the speeds of all pokemon on the field but no we're going to see a dynamax straight away yeah so not dynamaxing the Saranator here for hip light side he's going to be dynamaxing a different pokemon it's going to be that bronzong <laughs> oh, that's going to be dynamaxing here not a common pokemon he's dynamaxing at all so really interesting to see what Hippolyte's plan is going into this turn one with that Dynamax Bronzong and we're going to see the Indeedee go for that follow me again potentially allowing that Snorlax to set up that belly drum but we've seen the yawn potential on the toe kiss and we're going to see it again going to be putting that Indeedee to sleep next turn thanks to making it quite drowsy here so we're going to have to see if Felix is going to leave it this Indeedee in this time or let it get put to sleep again and the Snorlax going for that belly drum maximizing its attack and gonna have to see what the Bronzong's doing here. I'm really curious what this Bronzong's gonna be doing with its Dynamax form, and it's opting for a Max Steel Spike here. So gonna be raising the defenses of both of Hippolyte's Pokemon, doing a little bit of damage to that indeed, not so much damage, but crucially gonna be increasing the defenses of both of his Pokemon so he can take the attacks coming out from that Snorlax a little bit better. Yeah, I really like that in combination with what uh, Hippolyte did in the previous game. He brought Arcanine in to reduce uh, Snorlax's attack, but there's two ways to reduce the damage you take from physical moves. You can either bring in something like Intimidate and lower the, the attack stat of your opponent's opposing Pokemon, or hey, you can raise your defense stat as well. And that's exactly what Hippolyte's looking like he's opting for here. Uh, really good that it's uh, working with both Pokemon, but we do see the Togekiss just go straight out here. Yeah, sacrificing that defense boost that it gained from the Max Steel Spike, but gaining an Intimidate in this Arcanine, gonna be reducing the attack stat of that Snorlax. So still gonna be reducing the damage of this Snorlax here. And we are going to be seeing that Dynamax or Gigantamax, most likely that Snorlax again with its Gigantamax form. Indeed, he opting to stay in again and is going to be put to sleep at the end of this turn. So, going to get, be getting that Gigantamax Snorlax. We're going to have to see if the Indeed is going to be redirecting any moves away from that Snorlax so it can fire off one of those big G-Max replenishes here. And the Indeed is going to be going for that follow me. Yes, it's going to be redirecting once again before it gets put to sleep here. So uh, hoping to be knocked out here so that it can uh, give a free switch in for Felix. But they're gonna see that G-Max replenish go into that Arcanine. And even with that Intimidate, it's still easily gonna be picking up a knockout onto that Arcanine. And another Max Steel Spike coming out from the Bronzong. So they're gonna be increasing the defenses even more from the Bronzong, but crucially not knocking out that Indeedee. So the Indeedee will be falling asleep at the end of this turn. Yeah, I, I, this, there was two minds about this turn. I mean whether you want to take the knockoff, if you're Felix, whether you want to take the knockout on the Arcanine or not uh, going into this turn, because what it allows uh, Hippolyte to do is bring in that Togekiss again um, and have that redirection on the field. Now, it may be that Felix's game plan is to maybe knock out that Togekiss, bring in his Rebombi slightly later, and maybe use that Steel Spike, uh, sorry, Speed Swap to increase the speed of the Snorlax. Yeah, well, indeed, he's going to stay asleep here, and Snorlax will be falling asleep next turn, thanks to that yawn going out from the Togekiss. G-Max Replenish is going to be going into that Togekiss, and is still easily strong enough to pick up the one-hit knockout on the Togekiss. And we did see there the secondary effect of the G-Max Replenish come into play here. The Snorlax did find its Figgy Berry once again, so now it has access to a bit more recovery. And the Bronzong is going for one final Max Steel Spike before it runs out of its Dynamax, putting it at plus three stages of defense. So it's going to be able to shrug off a lot of the moves coming out from the Snorlax, but uh, Hippolyte also lost the Pokemon that was also we're defending from the de defense boost as well, so only the, the Bronzong is going to be boosted in defense here. Yeah, and that's going to be really important going into the later turns of the game. Gastrodon coming in here for Hippolyte, so going to be wanting to um, use that as much as he can, but 
Really, I think it, it looks like the game plan for Epilite is to Dynamax the Bronzong, use Max Steel Spike, make sure that Bronzong is as defensively strong as possible and can survive all of those physical attacks. We've seen that um, Bronzong, uh, sorry, we've seen that Felix's team mostly has physical attackers, so it may be something that Hippolyte is taking advantage of, and maybe he's taking, uh, Felix is able to take some more knockouts early in the game, but it may be that Hippolyte has the Pokemon that Felix isn't able to knock out and finish the game. Yeah, and we're seeing no Tyranitar come out from Hippolyte's side. It was such a crucial Pokemon in the previous game, but he has left it behind this time. So, going to be opting for that Gastrodon instead, which is going to be going for a Protect this turn. Orlucha is going to be going for that Acrobatics into the Protect of the Gastrodon, so doing no damage there. As a Max Ooh. Flare is coming out from this Snorlax into the Bronzong, and is going to be doing a lot of damage to that Bronzong, but thanks to those defense boosts, the Bronzong is able to survive, as the Max Flare is going to set up the Sun here, and Bronzong is going to opt for that Trick Room, as we were saying before, going to be reversing the speeds for five turns. Yeah, so, wow, we've seen Snorlax uh, use uh, a coverage move that not um, we haven't really seen too much before. Max Flare coming out from potentially a Heat Crash or a Fire Punch, or two fire moves that Snorlax usually has access to. Um, so, you know, we were talking just a second ago about uh, Bronzong being the Pokemon in the field that Felix couldn't deal with. It uh, turns out he can with that uh, that fire move. Yeah, now Horlucha is going to be one of the slowest Pokemon on the field, so it's going to be protecting itself with that Detect. But a Body Press coming out Ooh. from the Bronzong. So now we see why he was going for those Max Steel Spikes, raising his defense to be able to attack with those defense with the Body Press, as the Skull is going to be going into the Protect of the Horlucha. But fantastic game plan, it seems, coming out from this Bronzong. Not a Dynamax we see very often, but really coming into play here. Yeah, totally. Uh, th this is the uh, utility of Dynamax Pokemon that is really crucial for players coming into this tournament. Using that Max Steel Spike, as you say, raise the defenses, that raises the power of a new move called Body Press, which works on a Pokemon's defense, not its attack. So yeah, really great combination coming there from Bronzong and really putting Hippolyte back in the driving seat. He's now on the front foot, he's in Trick Room, He's against Pokemon that don't like taking fighting uh, moves like that Duraludon that's just come in for Felix. And he's going to be able to uh, hopefully do a lot of damage in this turn. Well, we'll have to see how much damage is coming out from this body press. <laughs> Thanks to those increased stages of defense, it's easily able to knock out this Duraludon here. And Gastrodon is going to be going for the Skull into that Halucha. With the Ray special defense it got from the Psychic Seed, it's going to take that very comfortably, but is going to be picking up that burn on the Halucha, of course, cutting its attack <laughs> in half and really seeing that damage and reduction coming into play with the plus three stages of defense and the burn as well on Fluke that's doing just no damage with that close combat to that Bronzong. No, none at all. Uh, you should see the, the utility of Hippolyte deciding to use a move like Scald, uh, take advantage of that secondary effect to get the burn on Halucha and reduce the damage output of all of its moves. In combination with that Max Steel Spike defense boost that the Bronzong got earlier in the game, uh, just... Uh, I'm not sure I can see a way back into the game for Felix here. Yeah, Horlucha, one of the fastest Pokemon with that unburn in the Trick Room, so it's always going to be moving last. It's got its reduced stage of attack with the burn as well, cutting mm. its attack in half. Going to be facing down two very slow Pokemon. But that Bronzong, most likely having access to that Gyro Ball yep. um, to produce its Max Steel Spike. And thanks to Horlucha being so fast, the Gyro Ball is going to be doing so much damage as it's based on the speeds of the Pokemon. Bronzong being so slow and the Horlucha being so fast will do so much damage, but opting for the Body Press instead, going to be using those defenses, and <laughs> even though it's a resisted hit, just easily able to knock out this Horlucha, and Hippolyte is going to take round one of this tournament. Yeah, so, uh, just... closer towards getting to that top cut coming back to either Tyranitar's attack or Bronze
Bronzong was really cool there. Like I, I, I was not expecting a Dynamax to come out from a Bronzong round one of this tournament, and it just put on. It, it, it was so influential. It just put on such a great show, and and this is exactly what we were after, after going into the new games, and with these new Dynamax uh, forms coming out, new moves, uh, and new ways to play. And this is exactly what we wanted to showcase right off the bat. We're seeing it here, players being so creative and making the most use of their Dynamax turns. Unfortunately for Felix, wasn't able to uh, pick up a win here, um, but hopefully we'll see him later on in the tournament coming back and uh, see him uh, day two with that Gigantamax Snorlax. I I'd be really excited to see that again. Yeah, really exciting to see a Gigantamax immediately on the stream in this round one. And of course, you can you afford to lose your round one. Not so, You always want to be winning your rounds, but of course you can afford to lose a, mm. a round, maybe two, depending on um, how your resistance ends up uh, working out. You can st Everyone's going to be playing these nine rounds. So even if you lose your first round, you can end up winning your next eight rounds and still be advancing into the day two of the tournament. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So guys, we're going to be going to a short break now uh, where we will be back with Hippolyte Bernard for the winner's interview.
Hello and welcome back to the Pokemon 2020 Bochum Regional Championships. And I'm joined by the round one winner here, Hippolyte Bernard. Hello, Jim. Hello. Um, you came, came into this tournament as the most recent regional champion, winning the Cologne Regional Champions back, back, Championships back in the Ultra Series. And now we're in this new format, VGC20. How are you finding VGC20 uh, so it's far? It's totally different from Ultra Series for sure. Like We don't have res respective Pokemon anymore. Some Pokemon are gone. We only have now 400 uh, Pokemon in the deck, so it's quite restricted for the team building. But there are also sometimes there are very interesting new Pokemon, new mechanics, new new moves. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty enjoying enjoying the formats yeah. so far. We saw in your team building that you were opting for some of the more tried and true Pokemon rather than some of these brand new Pokemon that we haven't explored um, to their full potential yet. Um, explain how how you team built going into this this yeah, so um, tournament for the team like. Uh, I observed that um, by playing online that um, Togekiss plus um, Dragapult, uh, a new Pokemon, is quite very popular. I used to have a Dra Dragapult on Bronzong slot in this team, but uh, I just built the team on the fact that, okay, I think that the lead Tyranitar Togekiss beat the Dragapult, um, uh, build the Dra Dragapult Togekiss lead. That's why I I, I started from Tyranitar and Togekiss and then build all the team around it. Yeah, and we saw the Tyranitar doing a lot of work in that game one, um, opting to use your Dynamax in game one for that Tyranitar, but then you did switch up and just go with a completely new strategy in that Bronzong. So um, tell us your thought processes in how you decided to go for that Bronzong strategy that ended up working out so yeah, well. Because I was maybe expecting that it will go uh, directly on the offense with AS old Chan, maybe. So it was quite possible. Um, and it was it can also deal with, with Snorlax and it deal better with uh, physical attacker. Uh, and then the, it can, it's super effective. It was all, all his um, special attacker line. Duraly Dome, I can one hit KO him if I, if I am at plus three in defense. So we have, we, we've body press uh, the new moves. Uh, from yeah, the bo body press doing a lot of damage there with those max steel spikes raising the defenses and putting on so much offensive pressure with the Bronzong. So you've won round one here. How, how do you think your chances are going into this, this tournament with the new format? Well, I hope that <laughs> I will try to continue to play like this, like very carefully. Uh, I did one. It's a. I think it's a format when you where it's very important to to check the moves on your opponent since everything can go in Dynamax and then just beat you very quickly. So you have to be careful with your switching, with your with the Pokemon you you bring on the board, and and I hope it will be okay. Some wise words coming out from Hippolyte for here for this round one. So uh, we're going to be cutting back to a short break here. And when we come back, we'll be back with round two of this Bochum Regional Championship. So stay tuned.